Hello, Clinic Review family. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be doing OR questions. I don't think you'll get a lot of OR questions on the NCLEX, but there's a few things you probably should know. So let's go ahead and get started after I thank my members for being members here on the channel. And also to let you know that if you're interested in signing up for something that you would pay me for, you can go to clinicreviews.com and sign up for small group tutoring with me. So let's go ahead and get started. As the unit nurse is about to give a pre-op medication to a client going into surgery, it is discovered that the surgical consent form is not signed. What does the nurse do after verifying the procedure with the client? Call the surgeon, call the anesthesiologist, give the medication, ask the client to sign the consent form. All right, now, you have to be very careful you don't overthink with this question. There's high risk for overthinking here because if you overthink, you say to yourself, how do I know the surgeon has explained the procedure to the client? And you don't know that, but you also don't know that they haven't. So you have to think fundamentally. If they have not yet signed the consent, what do you do? You ask the client to sign the consent. Now, if they say, oh, you know what? I don't really know what's going on here. Then you go, oh, now I need to call the surgeon. But all you know is that they haven't signed the consent, but they have verified the procedure. So you're going to get them to sign the consent. So if you found yourself saying, oh, I'd call the surgeon. That is your overthinking. Okay, so you need to think about that and, and don't get defensive about it with me, y'all. I'm not attacking you personally. I want you to pass NCLEX. I'm not telling you what to do in real life. In real life, you can ask them all kinds of follow-up questions. Hey, do you understand? Did the surgeon explain this to you? And da 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 da, da all that, right? But on the NCLEX, you verified the you verified the procedure with the client. So now they get to sign the consent, okay? So don't overthink it. Who is the most likely person to administer blood products in an operating suite? The circulating nurse, the holding area nurse, the scrub nurse, the specialty nurse. So the scrub nurse is, is not going to do it because they have to be sterile. The scrub nurse has to be sterile and these blood products are not going to be sterile. The circulating nurse, I'm sorry, not the circulating nurse, the holding area nurse is out because it's in the OR. Okay, so we're not in the OR. So the, the holding area nurse is not in the OR. The specialty, so it's between the circulating nurse and the specialty nurse. So the specialty nurse, you'd have to tell me what their specialty is. I don't know what their specialty is. The one that is not sterile in the OR is the circulating nurse. So we need someone that's in the OR, but it's not sterile. And that's the circulating nurse. The circulating nurse is the person who they have on scrubs, they have on a mask and all that, but they're running around getting stuff that they need. Okay. So that's the purpose of the circulating nurse. If sterile gauze falls to the ground and hits the front of the surgeon's gown on the way down, what does the nurse do to ensure proper infection control? Helps the surgeon change the gown, picks the gauze up with a pair of sterile gloves, picks the gauze up without touching the surgeon or sprays an antimicrobial on the surgeon's gown. All right, so sterile gauze has fallen to the ground, but on the way down, it hits the front of the surgeon's gown. So is the front of the surgeon's gown sterile, yes or no? Yes. Is the gauze sterile when it hit the front of the surgeon's gown? Yes. So the surgeon doesn't need to change their gown because it was a sterile gauze that hit the front of their sterile gown so it didn't contaminate. And we definitely are not gonna spray anything on the surgeon's gown. So we're crossing off D, like don't even consider that y'all. Absolutely not, never, no how, no way. But we're not gonna change the gown. So we're gonna cross off A and we're gonna cross off D. So do I pick the gauze up with a pair of sterile gloves? Do I need to pick it up with sterile gloves? 
or do I pick it up without touching the surgeon? So it's the circulating nurse that's going to come in and do this, right? Because now that it's hit the floor, it's not sterile anymore. So there's no reason to pick it up with sterile gloves because it's contaminated and the circulating nurse is not sterile. So we need to pick it up without touching the surgeon because that gauze is no longer sterile. The circulating nurse is going to come in and pick it up. They don't have to use sterile gloves to do so. Next question, which statement by a nursing student indicates a need for further teaching about operating room surgical attire? Further teaching. I must cover my facial hair. I don't need a sterile gown to be in the OR. If I go into the OR, I must wear a protective mask or my scrubs will be sterile. All right, which statement by a nursing student indicates a need for further Further teaching. Further teaching means it's a false statement. Further, I always remember the F and further goes with the F and false. So further teaching means a false statement. I must cover my facial hair in the OR. Well, that's a true statement. I don't need a sterile gown to be in the OR. Maybe. If I go into the OR, I must wear a protective mask. That is a true statement. We're looking for the false statement or my scrubs will be sterile. Now there's a rule that I've taught you before and on a single answer question, single answer question with two answers, say opposite things. One of them is almost always right. On a single answer question, when two things say opposite, two answers are opposite, one of them is usually right. And B and D are opposite. I don't need a sterile gown or my scrubs will be sterile. I realize they don't say the exact opposite words, but they're essentially opposite. Either you're sterile or you're not sterile. So the question is, do you have to be sterile to be in the OR? And the answer is no, you don't have to be sterile to be in the OR. Now, if you're scrubbing in, you have to be sterile, but not to be in the OR. So the one that needs further teaching is that the scrubs will be sterile. Okay. The scrubs are not sterile. Now, if you're scrubbing in, you're going to put on a sterile gown. Uh, you're going to put on sterile gloves, but that's the people who are scrubbing in. Okay. The, the scrubs themselves are not sterile. Which intervention does the nurse implement for an older adult client to minimize skin breakdown related to surgical positioning? So we all know, I think that, um, because the person is undressed and the surgical table is not well padded, that there is a risk for skin breakdown if they're on the table for too long. So we do have to be concerned about skin breakdown because they're often on the table for longer than two hours. So we do need to be concerned about skin breakdown. So apply elastic stockings to lower extremities, monitor for excessive blood loss, pad bony prominences, or secure joints on a board in anatomic position. So you might go, well, all those sound things sound good to me, Dr. Sharon. So Here's what you have to do when all the answers sound good. You have to relate every answer back to the question. Now, what is it they're testing in the question? Minimize skin breakdown related to surgical positioning. Minimize skin breakdown. So let's relate every answer to that principle. Applying elastic stockings to lower extremities will minimize skin breakdown, true or false. And do not overthink on this, y'all. Don't overthink. Do we apply elastic stockings to minimize skin breakdown? Absolutely not. That's not why we apply them. So that's false. Monitoring for excessive blood loss will minimize skin breakdown. Is that why we monitor for excessive blood loss? No, that's not why we do. So no, that's false. Don't overthink. Padding bony prominences will minimize skin breakdown. Well, that's true. Secure joints on a board in anatomic positions will minimize skin breakdown. No. That may protect, protect the joint, but that's not going to minimize skin breakdown. So padding bony prominences is the only one that minimizes skin breakdown. So there's a lot of times people say to me, Sharon, I get it down to two and I can't figure out which is the right answer. The reason you can't figure out which is the right answer is, is because you're not relating it back to the question and you're overthinking. So when you particularly when you get it down to two, or sometimes it'll be all four, maybe all four, you'll go, I like all four answers. Those are all good things to do in the OR. Okay. If they're all good things to do the OR, relate every one of them back to the key words in the question, which is skin breakdown. And it makes it really obvious what the right answer is. 
which staff member will be best for the nurse manager to assign to update standard nursing care plans and policies for care of the client in the operating room? Okay, updating care plans in the operating room. So the first principle to remember is only RNs do care planning. Only RNs. So we're, if there's anything, anybody here who's not an RN, we got to cross them off. Hey, surgical technologist with 10 years of experience. They're not an RN. They're off the list. B, certified registered nurse first assistant who has worked for five years in the ORs of multiple hospitals. Well, they're an RN. I don't know they're going to be my first choice, but they are an RN, so we can keep them on the list. C, holding room RN who has worked in the hospital holding room for longer than 15 years where they're, they're an RN. D, circulating RN who's been employed in the hospital OR for seven years. So they're an RN. So B, C, and D are all RNs. Are any of these people not working in the OR? Well, C does not work in the OR. C works in the holding room. So we're going to cross off C. So we've already crossed off A and we've already crossed off C. So B is an RN and D is an RN. Well, who's had more experience? Well, D has had seven years in this hospital. B has had five years in multiple hospitals. So the nurse manager wants somebody to update nursing care plans and policies. So I think it would be better for the RN who's been working in this hospital OR for seven years to update those care plans. So what I want to show you with this question is that this is not a question that you immediately go, oh, I memorized the answer to that. Y'all, listen, you are not going to have memorized the answers to most of the questions you get on the NCLEX. Let me say it again. You will not have memorized most of the answers that you get on the NCLEX. You have to have a way that you work through the problems to figure it out. Use common sense, read the words, relate the answers back to the words in the question. Okay. I, I know I say it over and over again, but I, you got to, you got to get it in your head. You've got to really get that. Cause if you don't practice doing these things, then you're not going to do them in real life. Y'all, I get, I get uh, messages all the time from people telling me that these videos have helped them pass NCLEX. So I really hope they help you pass NCLEX. I wish you all the best on passing NCLEX and I'll see you later.